My mind was filled with questions throughout the entire week Amy was away. Should I talk to her about it? Should I change the locks? Should I consider divorce? It wouldn't be simple to just throw away four years of marriage, but I couldn't tolerate her cheating, especially after we'd put so much effort into fixing things after the first time. She had promised that it wouldn't happen again. This hurt a lot. Her first affair had disrupted our plans to start a family. We spent months rebuilding trust. Strangely enough, Amy had come to me and confessed about the affair. I had no suspicions and would never have known otherwise. Her confession helped us work through it, even though it was incredibly painful. I remember that moment clearly. We were driving back from her mom's house. Amy had been unusually quiet during dinner, but her mom's chattiness masked any hint that something was wrong. Do you know that I love you, right? Yeah, I do. Are you feeling insecure? No, I have something bad to confess. I could see she was struggling. I had an affair. It's over now. It didn't last long. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I wish I could undo it. My immediate reaction was, who was it with? Why did it happen? Where did it happen? I'm glad I asked because in that vulnerable moment, she opened up and shared a flood of information. It turned out her friend Jesse's fiancé had been hitting on her. She agreed to meet him for a drink, claiming she wanted evidence to show Jesse, or at least that's what she said and partly believed. She told me she tried to discourage him and convinced him that he should want only Jesse. A couple of weeks later, when I was away on a business trip, she went to a party at Jesse's place, had a bit to drink, and they ended up having a quick sexual encounter in Jesse's bed. She saw him two more times, both at their place, before guilt overwhelmed her. She insisted she ended it. Two months later, we attended their wedding. A month after that, they moved to Chicago. I can understand how it happened. An attractive guy showing interest, a guy you know is attracted to you, your husband busy with work and travel, a bit of alcohol, and things escalate. I struggled with the fact that it happened multiple times. It was even harder to accept that he was Jesse's fiance. It might be a common occurrence for people to betray their best friends. But to me, that just showed a significant lack of character. How could she stand by as a bridesmaid celebrating her friend's wedding, all while secretly having an affair with the groom? Things went downhill between us in the following days. I didn't want to be at home, and I couldn't even bring myself to touch her. Whenever I tried, thoughts of how we had been intimate while she was involved with her friend's future husband would flood my mind. The fact that she had kept this a secret from me made me feel foolish and gullible. I cringed at the memory of congratulating him at the wedding and giving him advice on marriage, not knowing the truth. After about two weeks of hardly speaking, Amy asked if we could attend counseling together. She expressed her fear that I might leave her, that she had messed up irreparably, and that she had hurt me beyond forgiveness. The counseling sessions were tough, but after several months, I managed to distance myself enough from the mess that our relationship began to mend. A lot came to light during those sessions. Amy had been anxious about our marriage because of my frequent travel. I had been too passive in the relationship, avoiding discussions about our issues, and my silence had contributed to her feelings of inadequacy. It's interesting how something another person does can end up feeling like your own fault. I saw the counseling process as a way of distributing blame until it was evenly shared between us. For a while, the balance swung back and forth as we worked through our anger and denial. Eventually, we found a happy middle ground and started becoming happy again. The aspect of therapy that really stuck with me was the commitments we made to honesty, trust, earning trust, fidelity, and communication. I genuinely put in effort. I rearranged my travel plans so we could spend more time together later in the week. We even started working out as a team to make the most of our extra time. When I had long work hours, we'd make sure to have dinner together. But now, all of that was shattered. I stumbled upon her affair completely by accident. It was 3 a.m., and I needed to send a file, but my email wasn't working. Amy was asleep, so I thought of copying the file to her laptop, connecting to her work network, and sending the file through her work email. And that's exactly what I did. I happened to glance at the preview pane of her email while moving the mouse. There it was. You are so unbelievably zexy. The sender was someone from her workplace, so my initial guess, despite my racing heart, was that it might be harmless flirting or a playful exchange. 
The rest of the email was brief, but it hinted at a deeper connection. I told myself, all right, let's not jump to conclusions. Maybe it's just friendship, possibly. I looked up the guy's name in her email. Oh no. There were numerous saved emails from him, and she had sent him a bunch too. I randomly chose one from him. Yesterday was the absolute most amazing time of my life. You are a goddess. That was a bad sign. Then I picked another, this time from her. It was about setting up a date and mentioned, Jack will be out of town. I have to be home by 10 for his call. And there was another from him. You are a bad girl. And I love it. This was infuriating. My anger started to boil over. The thought of, I should confront her right now, crossed my mind. I sat at the keyboard, debating whether I should read all the emails. I need some time to figure this out. My initial idea was to forward all his emails to my own account, but that might leave traces. Instead, I painstakingly copied each email onto my USB drive. I attempted to sleep, but the thought of sharing a bed with Amy was unsettling. Trying to rest on the couch felt even worse, as if my own wife, who had been unfaithful, was pushing me out of our own bed. Eventually, I found myself slouched at the kitchen table, skimming through magazines until dawn broke. After that, I jumped into the shower, woke up Amy, and told her I had a problem with a work document that required my immediate attention at the office. Then I left. Sitting at my desk long before anyone else arrived, I printed out all the emails exchanged between my wife and this guy Rob. These messages detailed a physical affair in the form of a lengthy exchange. It was clear that the affair had started three months prior, it was still ongoing, and my wife had no intention of ending it. This wasn't some casual fling. They were regularly and consistently involved. The shocking part was that Rob had taken pictures. He sent Amy images of them together, often unflattering ones, including some taken in front of a mirror that showed their faces. I found it difficult to even look at those pictures. They deeply unsettled me and stirred up strong emotions. Another surprising aspect was that Rob and Amy were both attending the same conference the following week, from Monday to Friday, in Phoenix. They talked openly about spending a whole night together. However, they needed to be cautious about the timing because Amy had to make sure she didn't miss her scheduled calls with me. Those calls were part of the promise we made to stay faithful, open, and honest. It seemed that commitment might just be a meaningless formality to some people. I made the choice not to confront Amy right away. I wanted the week while she was away to figure out my own feelings and desires. The last time this happened, even though she had sworn it was the last time, she had blindsided me. I couldn't predict where a confrontation now would lead, but I knew from experience that it would be tough to keep a clear head for a while after. I glanced at my computer calendar. It was Wednesday. All right, I've gone through anger. I've gone through denial. Time to make a decision. What the hell do you want? The answer surged up from the depths of my mind. Revenge. I wanted revenge. She had deceived me. She had promised fidelity and then betrayed me. I had put my trust in her. I had dedicated two more years of my life to her solely because I believed the things she had said during our counseling sessions. Two years I could never recover, considering divorce wouldn't necessarily solve anything. I had this suspicion that she might be sticking around due to guilt or some strange sense of loyalty. Maybe she felt trapped because of some commitment she made to stay with me. If we did get divorced, she'd likely get half of not much. She'd still be a lawyer, still attractive enough to attract another man. What I really wanted was to shatter her, to crush her dreams and aspirations. At one point, I even considered hiring someone to harm her. Violent options crossed my mind, but each led me to realize that I'd become a monster and could end up serving a life sentence in prison. So, I looked for another way. I kept up my act during our nightly check-in calls. I was getting good at pretending to be content. I'll play my part well. I'll set her up and then bring her down. Now, I just had to figure out the right plan. Something truly ingenious. They say the devil is in the details, just like God. So I needed to come up with a plan that wouldn't give me away and that I could execute successfully. I realized I had to work with what I knew. My expertise was in computers. The temptation was to do something completely out of my field to throw suspicion off me. But I decided to stick with what I was skilled in. Using a convoluted and hard-to-trace method, I created an online account that tapped into servers located in another country. I also set up a basic website, 
It took a couple of weeks to get everything in place. During this time, I practiced acting and honed my skills. I let out a sigh. Hey, while you were away, I had some time to reflect on us. Amy was lying next to me in bed. She murmured, Hmm? I've been thinking maybe we should think about having a baby. Amy's interest was piqued. Not right this moment, but maybe we could start trying in a few months. Her hand gently touched my chest. She lifted her head to meet my gaze. That's a wonderful idea. I've wanted to bring up the idea of having a baby, but I was concerned that you... that we weren't quite ready. I put on a loving smile. I'm feeling ready now. You've been everything I could have asked for. My hand moved up and down her arm, holding her elbow. You've been so open and loving, and I truly believe you're fully committed to us. Amy's head dipped, seemingly embarrassed by the praise. I continued. I think we should discuss this more, see how it feels, make sure it's the right step. Maybe in a month or two. Amy leaned in and kissed me. As I said, acting can be enjoyable. We talked about having a baby. I wanted her to make an informed choice, which meant understanding how it could affect her career, our relationship, and our ability to take vacations. Update. After finishing my website, I faced a crucial decision whether to proceed with my plan or not. I opted to check Amy's email again, aiming to find out if she and Rob were still involved or if things had cooled down due to the discussions about having a baby. I waited until Amy was asleep. I woke up her laptop, logged into her work network, and accessed her inbox. There was nothing unusual and no emails from Rob. I ran a search, and there it was, my wife's own words. Baby, you know I are probably going to get pregnant soon? Get the baby now? After I go off the pill, we'll have to cool it when I'm ovulating. Don't worry, baby, i.e. be using a basal thermometer to tell me when the little egg drops so we won't suffer too much. Rob responded, We can test protection. Operation Revenge was set in motion. Amy and I enjoyed a romantic dinner at her favorite restaurant on a Friday night. While waiting for coffee, I held her hand and said, I think we should go for it. I gave her a meaningful nod. Amy's face lit up. She took a deep breath and reached for my hand. I really want a baby. Thank you. I love you. I love you too, sweetheart. We agreed that she'd stop taking the pill when her next cycle came around. She could become fertile within a month. Little did she know that on Monday morning, she'd encounter some unsavory individuals or hackers trying to appear threatening. My website had a front page featuring Amy, though her face was intentionally blurred. Real wife having fun. Real playing. I tried various typos, and that one felt suitable. It was a headline I could use. Real wife having a good time with a man who isn't her own husband. Cheating wife must pay. That was my favorite line. It's quite over the top, isn't it? My primary concern was getting the message to Amy. I spoofed an email address from a business contact. To ensure it caught Amy's attention, I used the subject line, I know about you and Rob. I sent the email through an anonymous server worried that the FBI might trace it back to me. By Saturday, I was anticipating the weekend's conclusion. I was relieved not to be at home. The waiting time allowed me to prepare for what I hoped would be a convincing act. My plan was that if she reacted with tears, pleading for forgiveness, well, I decided not to consider other possibilities. Her car was in the garage. The lights were on. Let's find out which Amy is here. Hey, honey, I called out. No response. Amy was in the kitchen with an open bottle of wine next to her. I noticed it was already half empty. Bingo. Starting early? I inquired. Amy shook her head. I had a really rough day. I stepped into the caring partner role, showing understanding for her tough situation. I gave her a gentle hug and suggested a relaxing neck rub to ease her tension. I worked on her tight shoulders, trying to bring comfort during her hard time. Even though she tried to pull away, I was determined to keep her close. I encouraged her to consider the idea, hoping the massage could take her mind off things. The thought of our future together crossed my mind, and she seemed surprised, like she suddenly realized something. It looked like she wasn't fully aware of what was happening. I asked if she was hungry in a casual way. I munched on a cheese sandwich and wondered if my actions were helping. Maybe her tough day at work played a part. To check, I needed to move forward with my plan. I got into bed next to my spouse, who was betraying me, getting ready for what's next. The email I received on Tuesday contained specific instructions, 
including both my email address and her parents' contact information. I opted not to grow overly confident, allowing Amy to believe she might face only minor repercussions. My intention was to draw out her distress, prolonging her discomfort. This, after all, encapsulates the essence of seeking retribution, maximizing emotional anguish. Her heart raced as she opened the email. Should I tell Jack? Should I pay? Paying might just lead to more demands, but not paying. What should I do? I repeatedly checked the website throughout the day and discovered that at 3.10 in the afternoon, she had paid the $500 to have her photos removed. I imagined she had been wrestling with these thoughts all day, struggling to decide. Unbelievable. Simply unbelievable, I thought. This plan is actually working. One of the most satisfying parts of putting a plan into action is witnessing what you had envisioned becoming a reality. While revenge is the ultimate aim, the process of planning and execution takes on a life of its own. Tuesday night wasn't a repeat of Monday. When Amy returned home, I wanted to gauge her mood. I greeted her at the door and, as a response, received a warm hug and a lingering kiss. Her happiness was evident, though somewhat forced. After all, she had paid the money but didn't know if the outlaws would hold up their end of the deal. Amy is truly an engaging companion. She's smart, we have great conversations, and she holds intriguing viewpoints. We cook dinner together, flirting, sharing food, acting like lovers. She thanked me for lifting her spirits, and it seemed genuine. Ah, this is the life. Later, we lay in bed discussing the possibility of getting pregnant. Her birth control cycle was ending in a few days, which meant waiting two to three weeks for her fertile window. I can't wait, Amy exclaimed. I love you with all my heart, she told me. Considering Amy's betrayal and the situation, the fact that we'd been through this before and were contemplating having a baby, made me reflect. Did I truly need revenge? This was on my mind during my daily run. Feelings of anger and pain. Should I rise above and forgive after making her experience suffering? Would it be more manly to divorce her and walk away? The answer surprised me as it emerged from the depths of my soul. I wanted to cause her pain. I wanted to shame her. I had no interest in transforming her into a genuinely faithful wife and mother. My desire was to disrupt her life in a way that would haunt her until her final day. And I wanted her to never suspect it was me so she would always believe that I had been the innocent victim, that she had lost me and the family we had planned. So what am I? I questioned myself. I'm a man. I shook myself vigorously. I'm a man, I repeated out loud. I crave revenge. I want to harm someone. I want to get into a fight and leave someone suffering in agony. I slammed the car door shut and started the engine. Amy was about to face consequences. Wednesday, Thursday, nothing. I arranged it for Friday, a dreadful email. We would have the entire weekend to witness the chaos unfold. $10,000. She could stash away five hundred, but having to deal with $10,000 all at once was overwhelming. The deadline was set for Monday, noon her time, or else. My intention was to push Amy to confess. I wanted to hear her say, Oh, Jack, I'm an ungrateful person who doesn't deserve you. I've lied and cheated. I'm worthless. That's the truth though I wasn't expecting quite that conversation. A brave man faces death once while a coward experiences fear countless times. At 11 in the morning, Amy's office number appeared on my caller ID. Despite the urge to let it go to voicemail, I answered, Hey babe, what's going on? I need to meet you urgently. Her tone was serious. Instantly concerned, I asked, Are you alright? Is everything okay? Please, she hesitated and I thought I detected a sob. Please come home as soon as possible. Instead of rushing back home, I drove around for an extra ten minutes, blasting loud music. Amy was waiting at the door when I arrived. She looked distressed. Worried, I inquired, What's the matter? I tried to put my arms around her, but she held me back. Tears were streaming down her face, and her hands were trembling. I managed to stay composed. My wife, the woman I love, was on the verge of admitting her infidelity her involvement in taking explicit photos with another man, and the fact that she was facing an extortion situation. Despite my seething anger, I managed to maintain a calm exterior. Although I could picture myself gripping her neck and shouting, Give me back those two years, give me back my life, you cheating witch! I resisted that urge. 
Instead, I took hold of her trembling hands and offered reassurance, saying, Whatever it is, you know I love you. My words seemed to catch her off guard. Then she abruptly turned and headed towards the bedroom. I went to the kitchen, refilled a glass of water, and brought it to the bedroom. There, I found Amy, lying face down on the bed, her body shaking with sobs. I sat down beside her, placed my hand gently on her back, and extended the glass of water to her. She declined with a shake of her head. My plan was to remain strong and silent, allowing her to lead the conversation. I raised my hand in a gesture to acknowledge her feelings. I'm a terrible person, she began, placing her hand on my arm. I continued to maintain my silence, shaking my head to signal that I disagreed with her self-assessment and that she was still a wonderful person in my eyes. It was clear that she needed some guidance in the conversation. Why do you believe that? I probed gently. She hesitated before responding. There are pictures of me, with someone else, not you. Pictures, you mean? I prompted further. Amy nodded. You never mentioned there were pictures. She lowered her head in shame. Are these recent pictures? I played my role as a skilled actor, expressing disbelief by shaking my head. Amy, who was it? Who? I questioned, maintaining my facade. She cried even more intensely. I let go of my facade of concern and observed her without emotion. You reap what you sow. I left the room. Seated at the kitchen table, I sipped a single malt scotch when Amy entered. She cautiously took a seat across from me. You'll never forgive me, she uttered. I scoffed. After your promises? Do you want me to leave? She inquired. I was on the brink of exploding. No, I want you to explain to me why. I want to know why you lied to me. I want you to tell me what I did to deserve this. You didn't do anything wrong. I feel so ashamed. She buried her face in her hands and tears flowed again. She only revealed his name when I specifically asked for it. He's married. In those moments, I gained a clear perspective on Amy, and the realization washed over me that I understood her reasons for the affair, even better than she did. She was an actress, and she had a need to act. Juggling an affair while upholding a seemingly happy marriage was, to her, a tantalizing acting challenge. She was attempting to play dual roles, the devoted wife and the secret lover, the exceptional mistress and the outstanding spouse. In her vision, she would eventually transition to being the perfect mother while maintaining a role on the side. She continued to put on an act, desperately hoping that her performance could win her an Oscar-worthy result and ultimately keep me by her side. Did she never contemplate the potential consequences of her failure? She kept speaking, shifting to praise me and expressing regret for the pain she had caused. I could clearly envision the entire situation. She had genuine feelings for me. Like the tale of Adam and Eve, she had succumbed to a state of wrongdoing. Eve consumed the forbidden fruit, and the knowledge within it consumed Eve. I had no uncertainty that Amy had gradually fallen into the affair, starting from friendship and playful interactions, fueled by his need to escape grief and her unspoken concerns about my commitment to starting a family together, then progressing to communication, and then further steps, until it led to more. Until Amy found herself portraying a role, playing a part, all the while oblivious to the fact that the role had consumed her. Final update. As I looked at Amy's vulnerability, I felt a deep connection with her. Not as spouses or lovers, but as individuals caught in an unending cycle where we possess knowledge but lack the wisdom to navigate it. Where we have desires and the determination to resist, yet lack the strength to triumph. Amy had done her best to cover up the wrongdoing. Why are you telling me this now? I inquired. The pictures, I'm... She couldn't continue. I realized she had mentioned the pictures initially, but hadn't elaborated on them. What exactly are these pictures? Pictures of... me... doing it. I was visibly furious. Images of my partner engaged in that act would enrage any man. Were you out of your mind? I snapped. What on earth were you thinking? This was the horrifying reality beyond her hopeful facade. She disclosed that it was his suggestion. The pictures excited him. I had already gathered as much from their emails. My focus was elsewhere. Is he coercing you? Is that what's happening here? I became indignant. She might be in the wrong, but she was still my wife. 
Is he using those pictures to threaten you? Amy shook her head. She had no choice but to confess. I'm being extorted. I got an email. It threatened me. It told me to visit a website. So, I did. It had pictures of me, but my face wasn't clear. They were pictures of me, you know, they demanded payment or else they'd expose me. They claimed to have addresses from my contact list. His face appears in those pictures. His wife will see them, everyone we work with. She gazed at me. He nearly had a heart attack when I confronted him. He kept saying his wife would divorce him, that he'd lose everything. I snorted. Wait, you mean they were digital? I was astounded. Amy nodded in confirmation. You foolish. I trailed off. Don't you realize, obviously you don't realize, I added with emphasis, that digital files can be traced? Your emails are stored on your servers. Skilled hackers who breach your network can search for image files. Silence. I waited, mulling over the issue. If it wasn't your boyfriend, I said the last word with disdain, anyone might have gotten hold of a password or cracked it. Maybe someone left their laptop unattended, or perhaps someone wrote down the password and lost the note. If it was a hacker, they might have searched for image files and then honed in on your account. They didn't threaten him, right? No. Who knows? He sent the pictures to you, right? So those pictures were also in his emails and they might have breached his account too. What should I do? Amy's question sounded half-assed and half-pleading. You haven't told me the whole story yet. They demanded $500 and said if I paid, they'd remove my pictures from their website. $500? You've got to be kidding me. What's the name of this website? I expressed frustration. Let me take a look. Maybe I can figure out what's going on. She shared the site's name with me. I went to my computer and entered that name. I also searched for it on Google. No results came up. No website with that name exists, I called out to her. Did they provide a URL or a link to click on? I inquired. A link. Probably some made-up name. Can you access the email they sent? Amy retrieved her laptop from her bag, placed it on her desk, and logged into her work email account. Send that email to me. Actually, wait. If I forward it, the link might just turn into text. Let me take a look. I leaned over her desk, opened a new email, addressed it to myself, and then copied the threatening email along with its link into the new email. After sending it, I returned to my desk. The email popped up a minute later. I opened it and clicked the link, with Amy standing behind me. As the words cheating wives appeared on the screen, I glanced back at Amy, and she instinctively moved back a bit. I put on a show of reading the text. Who the heck are these jerks? Have you paid them yet? I paid them $500, Amy replied. How? I charged it to my visa. They had a credit card link. I thoroughly explored the website. I don't see your picture here. They said they'd remove it if I paid. I looked at her, urging her to confess. Come on, tell me why you're revealing this now. Don't make me drag it out of you. Earlier today, Amy turned away. They sent me another threat. If I don't pay them $10,000 by Monday, they'll share the pictures with everyone. Oh my God, is that true? Amy nodded. She suddenly broke down. I've messed up everything. I can't believe this is happening. She slumped onto the floor. This isn't how I wanted my life to turn out. You know what I'm going to do? I spoke in a gentle tone. No, I'm going to divorce you. That's my plan, Amy sobbed. What's your response? You get what you give, honey. Every good thing has its end. Will you pay? I inquired. I'm lost. I've lost you, she said, raising her head. What should I do? They demanded how much? $10,000? They won't stop, I noted. I'm aware she replied. I wouldn't mind if I hadn't lost you. Friday afternoon faded into evening. I dozed off. When I woke up, Amy was in the den staring at her computer. I can't make the payment, Amy confessed. I just can't, I grunted. I saw that coming. Ten thousand dollars is a hefty sum to part with without certainty. Maybe they're bluffing, she mused. If I tell everyone about the pictures, it's almost like they've already been shared. Amy, I can't believe you did this. We were thinking of starting a family. I don't know if I'll ever be able to move past this. On Monday morning, the final step of Operation Revenge was set up. An email containing all the pictures and some of the most explicit conversations. I didn't waste any time. I sent it to everyone on her contact list, including family, friends, and colleagues. 
I didn't wait until noon either. I gathered my belongings and loaded them into my car. Some might expect me to stick around to relish the aftermath, but witnessing Amy's struggles would only bring me sadness. The facade of the outside world as an illusion could no longer be maintained. It was time for me to leave. Amy's life unraveled. She had to leave her job and suffered professional and social humiliation. People mocked her, some turned their backs, but many were empathetic. Love is intricate. I loved Amy and she loved me, but her lack of self-control made our marriage untenable. Divorce proceedings were underway. I also worried about her attempting to get pregnant to tie me down. The divorce was finalized. Our possessions were easily divided. We sold the condo and split the proceeds. Amy echoed her previous sentiment, having you is all that matters. However, having me was no longer an option. Truthfully, we stayed in touch. Her lover faced even worse consequences. His wife couldn't forgive his public humiliation and took him for all he was worth. I felt no sympathy for him. Amy and I started drifting apart when I met the woman I eventually married. Balancing a relationship with my new partner while still being connected to Amy was challenging. Amy reached out with a note when she remarried. She expressed that she still had feelings for me. It's been years since we spoke, and honestly, I don't really care about her life anymore. Currently, Pilar and I have two kids, aged three and five, and we're actively working on adding a third to the family. Pilar is fully aware of my past, including all the details about what transpired with Amy. We've had open discussions about it. Pilar knows I'd react strongly if she were to ever cheat, and similarly, I know she'd react even more intensely if I were to betray her. The point I'm trying to make is that seeking revenge should be kept in perspective. It's essential not to let the desire for revenge consume you entirely. Getting back at Amy actually helped me grow stronger and, I believe, become a better person. I faced the depths of pain and emerged into the light. I've experienced intense anger simmering within me. Now, when I hold my precious daughters, I'm fully aware of the profound and all-encompassing beauty of unconditional love.